What's going on folks? I'm about to be showing you how you would change out your spark plugs on this Chevy Impala. This happens to be the 3400 engine and this happens to be a 2000 model. But it's probably the same for multiple different years of Chevy Impalas. To get to your front spark plug is pretty easy. All you got to do is look right here in the front. You'll have one, two, three right here in the front that you want to take out. The size spark plug socket that you'll need is the, the 5 8 side. The 58, as you can see it right here, it's the 58. That's the one that you will need. If you have like a tool case or something, what it'll probably say is 5 8 or 58. It's a smaller size socket that you'll need to take out these spark plugs. So basically, all you're going to be doing pretty much is just I've already changed out the front one, so I'll just give you a quick overview. You just basically just want to wiggle your spark plug wires off of it. Like that, you just want to basically wiggle your spark plug wires off, and you'll see your spark plugs right there. And all you're going to be doing basically is taking your your spark plug socket and basically just sticking it on top of it and removing it. Then once you get that done, you'll be putting your spark plug wires back onto it. Also, make sure that you remember the order that the spark plug wires go back on. The, the correct way because if you get them crossed you'll have all type of problems stuff like that with your engine so make sure if you took what I like to do is do it kind of one at a time I'll take like this one off change this spark plug and then go ahead and put this wire back on this is a good time also to check your spark plug wires just to make sure it doesn't look like burnt or nothing like that inside of it as well as any damage to your wires itself if so you may need to change your wires also but basically once you've changed out your spark plug now you just want to take that open hole, put it back onto the spark plug and push it in until you feel a good connection to it. So pretty much you'll be doing the same thing for these three in the front. Now the ones in the back are a little bit harder. To get the ones in the back, what I've, what I've done in the past is some people will remove this whole distributor cap right here to get to the spark plugs backer. But what I've been doing is when I do it is I just remove Maybe I remove this pipe right here. That way it's not in my way because your spark plugs are kind of, you know if you can see it, they're back down here in the back part. You can actually reach it without taking off your distributor cap if you just remove a couple different things. That one thing right here is this pipe. I just kind of wiggle. Be careful when you're wiggling off this pipe. It's kind of wiggle it out like that. So you can move that to the side to get that out your way. And then also what I did was I removed this little hose right here. Also, just kind of pull that little hose off of it. And then I came up here like a little brace that you just kind of want to pop this piece out of. And take this from up underneath here like this pretty much. Just getting this out the way. So once I got those two things like that out the way, now I'm going to be coming down here and get your spark plugs. You can see the wires that's going down here. So you'll have three of them also that's down there. I don't know if you can see them, see if I can get you a better angle so you can possibly see. It's pretty dark. Yeah, if you can see those wires, there's one, there's two, and the other one is basically over there. And you should be able to see those. I'm gonna show you a better minute. I'm gonna get a light. Okay, I got like a light. So you can see the spark plugs that's down there. You can basically get to them. You just wanna take your hand, reach down there, pull them out one at a time and changing them. Well, actually pull them out one at a time as you're changing them. And once you change one, put that one back on and go to the next one so hold on. I'm gonna go ahead and reach down I have pretty big arms myself so I'm just reaching down follow the wire down like this until you you'll feel the head of the spark plug then once you do that all you gotta do is just wiggle it off and once you have it off so I'm about to pull this one off yeah see I just wiggled it off like that now I have that one off. Now I'm going to do is go ahead and get my socket and go down there and take out the spark plug itself. 
Sometimes you may have to fill around a little bit to fill the spark plug head again, but they're pretty much sticking out just like the front ones. I'm about to do that now. All right, and what I'm going to be doing now is instead of taking the whole socket and socket set wrench and stick it down, the first thing I'm going to do is, is go ahead on and put the socket like this onto the spark plug, but I'm also going to add my extension to it. That way, once I get the socket an extension on the spark plug and then next I'll come back and actually use my socket to my socket wrench to actually take it out so I'm gonna do that now so I'm just kind of reaching down there and getting kind of feel first for your spark plug head you could actually feel the head of your spark plug as you're going down there Hold on. filling around till I feel it okay yeah and once I have it on well, it's kind of gonna be at an angle now what I'm going to do basically is take my wrench, my socket wrench, which I should have enough space to put it on the top of it. And then I have enough space to put on the top of it right there. Then I'll go ahead and take this one out. I'm about to do that now. All right. So now that I have the, the socket set inside of there and it's on the spark plug itself, now I'm just kind of turning it until I get the, the spark plug out of it. It's kind of tight, but you definitely have enough space to do it. All right, I think that's it. And sometimes you'll pull out and the spark plug may not be actually inside of your wrench. And if so, your socket just reach down and pull it out. I think I got this one. Yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, so basically, this is a spark plug I just took out. Now what I'll be doing pretty much is putting in the new one. Then pretty much I'll be going to the next one. Pretty much it's the same process for all of them. Just kind of reach down, feel the spark plug wire. Then put your, sometimes you may want to actually put your spark plug um, socket onto it with the uh, extension on. And then add your, your actual uh, a, a wrench set on your wrench itself onto your extension to get it out. This just makes it a little easier versus trying to put the whole thing down at the same time. Just kind of put the... The actual spark plug socket and extension on first all right folks once again this is how you would change out your spark plugs on a 2000 chevy impala it's probably the same for about the 2000 up to about the 2005 and like i said and once you get that out just on another note like i said do the same thing what you did in the front which is go ahead on and take out one put the new one in check your wire and then replace that one Go to the next one, do the same thing. That way you don't get your wires crossed. But you don't want to do that. Then once you're done pretty much doing everything, don't forget to come back and reconnect these wires, these pipes right here that you took off, which this one will go right here. This big one goes right here on your engine. And then this small one goes right here onto this little piece right over here pretty much that you want to plug that back onto. All right, folks, please check out our other videos and please subscribe. Thanks. Folks, I'm about to show you how to add some Freon to a Chevy Impala. This happens to be a Chevy Impala 2000. And where you want to put your Freon there is where your low line is at. And on this one, it's right in the back, right there. Basically, right up underneath where your windshield wipers are at in the engine compartment. As you can see, there's your... What you'll need next is a... It's basically just a valve like this, pretty much, that goes on to your low pressure line. And once you do that, what you want to do, first what you want to do is start your car up and make sure that your actual um, compressor, your AC compressor is kicking on, which should be over on your left-hand side, right by your battery. That should come on also. That's what actually allows the Freon to be sucked into the actual car itself. So first thing you want to do is start your car up, have your car running, and make sure that your AC compressor come on. Once it comes on, you should know because it'll make like a little spinning sound. You should see it start spinning. The compressor is actually right over here, down at the bottom. Right there is your AC compressor. It's kind of kind of hard to see. But if you look straight down, right here, here's your battery. Straight down there, on that very bottom compressor is actually your AC compressor itself right down there so once you start your vehicle up next what you want to do is when the AC compressor is on is actually connect your this end of this pressure gauge onto 
the actual your low line and once you do that you want to put your can on I'm gonna do that now all right as you can see now I actually got the actual um, line on there that I'm actually going to use to fill the car back up with Freon once I have that line on I'm gonna take this in and actually screw it onto the new can of Freon and once you screw it on there you want to take this piece and screw it all the way down which basically punctures the can and then screw it all the way back up which will allow the Freon to actually go into the vehicle.